have on it in seven days after I shot that buck. It took a few days off. And then it got warm. So it's did a bow and I went fishing. And it's 80 degrees for three days, so I uh, got some cameras out. Everything's after dark. Nothing I want to shoot anyways, and I caught all these bluegills, and there are some dandies in here. There's some 10 inchers, but most of them are eight, eight and up. They're all scaled, headed, gutted, and defend. Here's another really big crooked tree that you have to have screw-ins. Tree goes up, that side's dead, but it makes a very severe angle. And right up by that branch going out to the right is my bow and quiver that's where I've set up but you have to them with screw-ins and when you put the screw-ins in for your ring the ones in the front they have to go parallel to the ground not perpendicular to the tree like a straight trunk tree so the ones in the back are gonna seem way higher on both sides right and left base of this tree is huge give you an idea how big that is. There's a tree step. Go up that. And away. There's the bow. And that's a hard lean. Rattled in a little eight point out of that this morning. Next to this big cornfield again. Next to this timber. This timber. It's got phenomenal understory. Once this corn's cut, they'll bed in this timber, but right now they're in the corn. Everything's in the corn just about. Almost every buck I've rattled in out of 17, I rattled one out of that corn this morning. So this is actually my second hunt since I shot that buck. This is a very extreme big tree, and it's got a really hard lean to it. Let the tree go way to the south and then it turns and goes way to the north. That's half dead so I hope it doesn't fall. But I'm going to do a rattle sequence just before dark. There's the view from another angle, the lean of that tree. This is open. This is a creek. 